Hey guys, and welcome back to the Great Ace Attorney! Today's the day, February 20th, 9.23 a.m. Oh lord. The case for Natsumi, the guy we barely know anything about. Here we go. I never expected this. Who would have thought we'd be back here again so soon? Even I'm surprised, honestly. Thought, you know, be like, eh, no, give it a day or two. We are on study tour of Great Britain with the intention of learning the country's legal practices. So I guess we're going to be here every day from now on. <laughs> In order to research the latest court procedures here, we need as much court experience as possible. But, I mean, a, a trial every day? I suppose that's true, but for the person in the dock, may well be his or her only time in court. It could be life-changing. In which case, treating it as research may seem a little... Crass? Yeah. Let's try our best. Not just like, oh, you know, we're practicing. No, let's give it all we got. I intend to. When you put it like that, you're quite right. Good morning? Uh? Oh! Hey, oh my god, your eyes! Jesus! Y are you okay? Mr. Natsumi, good morning to you. Oh my god, that's painful to look at. Are you alright? Your eyes are terribly bloodshot. The early bird catches the worm, as they say here in Britain. Yeah, I've heard that expression before, once or twice. But I really do not want to catch a worm. <laughs> Natsumi! So I've tried desperately to wake up early, but I was so worried I couldn't catch a wink! No worm or a wink, what a shame. And now I'm absolutely exhausted as a result! Do all literary people take things so literally? I've never thought about it that way. Oh, I gotta, you, I gotta steal that. Oh. Ace Attorney. Thank you for putting your faith in us today, Mr. Natsumi. Mm. <sighs> I wish I had nine lives. My whole future hangs in balance. I'm we get too terrified to tremble. There it goes anyways. Really? Because I feel tremors in the floor. I can do this. I can't take, I, no. <laughs> <laughs> I thought he was bragging. I'm trembling, but I can do this. Mm, sticks bottom out for no discernible reason. I can't take it! Although, locum student, Mr. Navarroto Esquire. It, yeah? I caught a glimpse of public gallery as I walked by the courtroom. It looked like opening night of the opera. There were so many people! I had no idea my case was such a notorious affair here in London. Uh, well, neither did I. Yeah, well, that's strange. I mean, I guess people are interested in the foreigner, but still. I guess word gets around. Do you know why that might be, Mrs. Sato? I'm sorry, Mr. Naruto, but I have no idea. Smile. Oh, uh, so that all-knowing look of your face is just confidence, then, is it? Can I borrow some? Don't hide the truth from me! It's, it's because of the Reaper, isn't it? Oh, I didn't even think of that. Lord Van Zeeks. I still don't know if it's Zeeks or Zykes. I'm sorry. Is that right, Mrs. Sato? I purchased as many different newspapers as I could find this morning, and yes, Lord Van Zeeks is on the front page of every one. He's that famous? I mean, I know he's a lord, but I knew it. Sometime after the prosecution, prosecutor was dubbed the Reaper of the Bailey, he sought to appear in court, it seems. It's been several years now, in fact. Until the day before yesterday. Hmm. Why did he come back all of a sudden? That's really strange. I mean, it could be coincidence, but like... Like, did he ha... <sighs> I know my theories are always wrong and not even worth delving into, but maybe... Maybe he had it out for McGilded? But then why is he going after Natsumi? There's no connection there. Ooh, maybe there is. Uh... Inspector Gregson told us something similar, didn't he? Yeah, I remember. Let's just read it again, because it's been a while. The trial two days ago marked Lord Van Zeek's return to the courtroom after a long year hiatus. The trial of Magnus McGilded. What a harrowing experience that was. No kidding. Uh, I still can't get that, like, that hand coming out, or, like, that, that window breaking in the omnibus. God, it was scary. Johnny, it's a broken piece of glass. What's the bit? It's free. Uh, it's startling. Maybe not scary, okay? Everyone has a different definition of scary, all right? <laughs> I'm easily scared. That's all. 
I believe that appearance has made even greater waves here in the capital than today's. But we wouldn't have realized, of course. I've only just arrived in the country. Why is the Reaper back in the Bailey so soon? For what appears to be a mundane murder. That's the question the papers are asking. And they all are speculating various answers. Mm, mundane? Mundane? It's the most significant saga of a century to some of us! Uh, oh dear, I meant no offense, Mr. Natsumi. We know the murder is, uh, you know... We'll treat it with the utmost importance, yes. But that is just how the newspapers are describing it. Well, they're rude. Let us... Lest we also forget the fact that it could spark an international incident. Obviously, the reappearance of this infamous prosecutor has caught people's attention. But there's another blatant similarity with the trial of two days ago. Me? Uh, yes, I agree. Welcome, student Mr. Narahodo Esquire! It's you! Oh, yeah, well, I suppose that is technically true, but I'm not, like, that big a deal, right? Both times, it is you who stands against this legendary prosecutor! So, uh, it can only mean that you're friends with the Reaper! I... I wouldn't go that far. He doesn't seem very nice. I don't rub shoulders with the Deathbringers. No Reaper games. None. Never been one, never will. I'm afraid there's really only one other explanation. It can only be another example, Mr. Naruto. Of your uncommon bad luck. <laughs> what if that's actually the lore explanation? Uh, th thanks for reminding me. Oh, this is just my luck. Why must I be presented by such a man with such frail fortune? By the least lucky lawyer alive. That wasn't four alliterations. You, you broke your record. Well, let's not forget that it was you, Mr. Natsumi, who asked me to represent you. It's like you have many other options, so let's not get picky. Oh, quite right. Yes, it's true. I'm just a student new to London with a little in the way of experience, skills, or luck, it appears, but I promise you this. I will fight your corner until the bitter end, and I will believe in you, Mr. Natsumi. So please, hush up! Oh, benevolent locum student, Mr. Naruto Esquire! <laughs> you really should stop saying that. You're not alone here with us, Mr. Natsumi. Really. Whatever happens, we will always be by your side. <gasps> oh, benevolent non locum assistant, Mr. Mikotobo Esquires! Esquires? Is that. I am in your debt forever! I shall never forget. Ah, Mr. Natsumi, counsel for the defense, get the frick in here! Court's in session about to begin. Kindly make your way to the courtroom at once. Ah, <sighs> Jesus Christ. Alright. Well, Mr. Natsumi, it's time. Let's go. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yes! I've changed his voice like a million times. Not gonna lie. He's a he's a hard one to get a grasp of. This is it. My second appearance in a British courtroom. And my second trial against the Reaper. Hope you're watching. Over me, Kazuma. Cause I'm a needed. Cause this time I won't let my faith waver. I'll believe in my client to the last. Just like you believed in me. I believe I can do this now. I'm ready for this fight. I'm glad Naruhodo is pumped up, cause ooh, I am Dog, this head is empty, man. I'm sorry. I try like I don't see what the Garadeb household had to do with any of this bullcrap. That seemed like just a giant uh, huh? Wait, you? In the name of Her Highness Her Majesty the Queen, I hereby declare the court to be in session, y'all. I now call upon the counsels of the prosecution and defense to declare the willingness to proceed. No prosecution is fully prepared, my lord. The defense is ready, my lord. Oh, come on, no, don't, don't, don't do the darting of your eyes. The Nipponese are truly fascinating breed. What? Lord Strongheart has told me all about you. That you're a student who arrives in London but two days ago? <laughs> a mere amateur. Well, y do you have a point? Because we all have to start somewhere. Being a compatriot, you feel compelled to try to help the accused, I suppose. Typical Nepponese arrogance. Hey man, that sounds awfully effing racist. Forgive me, but I do not believe arrogance is an appropriate description. 
Sasato. You're acting like my mom. Oh, no, you do not talk that way to my lawyer. Effed up. Where's your parents? They taught you awful. After all, at our previous encounter, the defendant was found to be innocent. <laughs> that he was. And don't mind me, I'm going to take my sip. Big sips. <laughs> Very true. And the most fascinating of dark trial it was, too. The tragic conclusion came later, of course. <laughs> Here's to the acquitted and his unfortunate violent end. How do you know it was a violent end? I'm starting to piece it together. Yeah, it, it's it's Mr. The guy from the last trial. What's he doing here? Thank you, counsel. I see both sides are fine and fatal. Well, how about that? Now, ladies and gentlemen of the jury, are you ready to carry out your due dates? Here in the court, impartial members of the public? <laughs> I reckon they didn't want to make a new model for them jurors, so uh, you never know when you might be down your luck. I believe in a fair play for everybody. Oh, goodness. She looks adorable. Well, I must warn you, I'm rather most, more than ruthless than I appear. Oh, God. Oh, well, not me. What you see is what you get. I'm, so, I'm a peace-loving fellow. Yeah. Wait, what? I'm afraid to say I think it's quite possible that Mustache Foreigner did the deed. You, you gotta be careful. Whoa, this guy. <laughs> Yo, Omar, is this you? Come on, what are you waiting for? No doubt he did it anyway. Hmm? Sorry, we didn't, didn't quite catch that. Oh, God. These are gonna be a handful, I can already tell. Very well, let us proceed. Open and segment, if you please. Lord Van Zeeks. Very recently, Great Britain signed an alliance with the rising power in the Far East. The accused in the dark today is a student from the same land, a certain Mr. Sokseki Natsume. And if it weren't for him, the character Morgana would never exist! I found that out recently! God dang it! But, you know, I, I'm not I'm not saying he did it, but man, I really wish he didn't write that book. Uh. And while our country has extended this foreign student the warmest of welcomes, regrettably, the kindness has not been returned. In fact, this student is accused of a most sinister act. <laughs> of plunging a knife in the back of an innocent woman who is doing nothing but walking down the street. A knife criminal. I'll tell you from bitter experience, that was not the worst. Bloody old they is. Just look at that sallow complexion. A short stature. He's one of those dreadful Japanese. Hey, hey, you can't say that. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Come on, then. Let's get this over with. With me now, everyone. One, two, three. Yeah, sorry. Don't quite catch that. And there you have it. Pray forgive the discourtesy of smashing my hollow chalice here in this great chamber. No, that's quite all right. I mean, nothing done break but your chalice. You should be apologizing to me. I didn't need to put that thing there. Be that as it may. Allow me to call the first witness to the stand. All right. Very well. Bailiff, get him in here now. All right. Who are we dealing with? And it's, oh, well, well that's not surprising at all. Your name and occupation, please. <laughs> yes, sir. Uh, Tobias Gregson, detective. <laughs> Tobias Gregson, detective, inspector, Scotland Yard. I got my, I got my cops mixed up. Sorry. Would you please summarize the events of the case for the court, inspector? It can do. Oh. Huh. She looks oddly. What? Hold up. Is it just me or they look, they look, maybe it's just the head shape. I guess their ears are in sort of different places. But why is Joan Garadeb on the mother effing jury? If, if she, it was a witness that. Victim is thought to be a young woman in her 20s by the name of Olive Green. See? I I'll beg your pardon, Inspector? Thought to be? What? You haven't been stabbed in the back by an attacker's knife, uh, the victim fell unconscious. It's a shame, really. That was three days ago now. 
She's been comatose ever since. Oh, that's awful. Oh, what? So do we know who she is for sure? Hmm. Comatose? Hmm. I could go for some toast right now. Ah, I see, but her life is not in danger, no? Fortunately for the Eastern student, the charge will not be murder. Pray, elaborate for the de elaborate for the details, Inspector. Yeah, I can do, sir. If I could ask everyone to look at the street map, it's right here. Put it on the monitor. I mean, <clears throat> I will individually give out a map to everyone present. Uh, as I mentioned, <laughs> I forgot what timepiece we're in. The incident took place three days ago at around five in the afternoon. It appears on the pavement running alongside Briar Road. A wide thoroughfare for horse-drawn vehicles, see? God, look at that. I had not long since stopped snowing as the victim, Miss Green, is walking down the street. Okay. Out of the blue, she was approached from behind by the accused, stabbed in that air the back. That's such a... Ugh. Luckily, the long lady's life was spared, and she's certainly being treated in one of the city's hospitals. But well, being unconscious as she is, you've been able to take a statement from her. But they gotta act. They never know when she's gonna wake up. This is the case file with everything we know about the victim so far. Here you go. Thank you, Inspector. Coral will accept it as evidence, if you please. A file containing an overview of the details she was found in the back. Okay. And that's just a summary of what we already know. What of the weapon that was used? Ah, uh, sir. I have that right here. It's removed from the victim's back. Don't worry, we disinfected it and all that. That big thing is starting to make me scared to walk down the street now. Jesus. With a heavy blade like that, almost anybody would have been able to stab the poor woman. Even the scared-looking Soseki-san, I suppose. Uh, I'm already doubting, so not sue me, no! A common garden jackknife, I'd say. Rather nondescript, but okay. Thank you, Inspector. Court accepts the blade as evidence. A large but commonplace knife. It doesn't seem like there's any markings on it leading it to Natsumi, which is good. I don't know why I'm looking for that. But, uh... Now then, what do we know of the motive? Money? Valuables, I presume? But what we can tell by looking at that, uh... With man's possessions, it seems like the uh, poor student herself. So, uh, I'd imagine she had nothing to go much of a what pension, my lord, you know. I see. Well, in that case, are we looking at some deep-seated resentment toward the victim? They're strangers, right? Afraid I uh, couldn't say. Why? I don't know him personally, so... Apart from visiting second-hand bookshops, the defendant missing not soon, we don't appear to get out too much. At the moment in time, we haven't been able to establish any sort of connection between him and a victim. Yes. Uh, there you go! Where are we even here? <laughs> if theft and grievance have been ruled out of the motive, what reason could Mr. Natsumi possibly have for stabbing the young woman? Yet, you arrest a man in spite of that! In a totally unjustified and heavy-handed way! Objection. Well, he sort of confessed to it, also? What the? Hey! That was it! You almost hit somebody! Pray forgive the discourtesy of flinging a fleshy uncooked bottle in the public gallery. But your words have soured its hollow banquet. So you decided to just go flinging stuff? Or it is you, my learned friend, who's being heavy handed here. I, I beg your pardon? I don't see how. I feel like my claims are pretty justified. Scotland Yard does not arrest people without good cause. That should be beyond question. Just because Sholmes told him it was... Uh... Inspector Gregson. The prosecution calls for your formal testimony. I explain to the court precisely why that constabulary came to arrest the Nipponese student. Yeah, can do. Yes, sir. Right on. Don't look at the dead pixel on my goddamn your coat. I'm trying to get clean. <laughs> I'm sorry, there's one dead pixel on his coat. Why is it there? I'm going crazy. As I said, it was about 5 o'clock in the afternoon when the occurred, and there was an unusually light fog. Visibility was reasonably good, and not too bad, not too great. There was no reason, there was no one else than the victim and the accused. So, out of the blue, victim stabbed from behind, subsequently collapsed on the pavement there. The accused ran off, scattering into belongings all over the floor. Those being a number of old books he just bought. 
He's on his way home from a bookshop, it seems. Okay. Yeah, it was just a matter of working out who the books belonged to. And we found a bloke to arrest him. Dang it! They did a way better... I underestimated the Scotland Yard! Crap, they did a way better investigation than I thought! Whole books, you say? Yeah, my lord, I, uh... The photograph of the scene of the crime taken immediately after that uh, incident. <laughs> she died like... I mean, she didn't die, but she felt like Peter Griffin, god dang it! Wow, Johnny laughing at the death of innocence? No! Also, she's not dead! kind of funny, I don't know. Oh yes, I can see the books to which you're referring. My god, that pose, kind of humorous. I mean, I will take the photographic print as evidence and look at it and laugh later. Anyway. You Nipponies are a spineless breed. Too cowardly to admit defeat. Huh? Denying everything despite overwhelming evidence to the contrary. Well, um, I have to at least try. Forgive me, Lord Van Seeks, but the defendant is not denying everything as you put it. What are you doing, Mr. Sato? Saving the day as usual? Well, go on. I like when she talks. She kind of funny, but not overly. It's a good balance, I think. Mr. Natsumi has admitted to playing some part in the incident. Isn't that right, Mr. Norohodo? Oh, uh, yes, 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 absolutely, now that you mention it. We visited him in the prison yesterday. He did tell us what had all happened. Yeah, he's, he's at least like... Partially, I mean, he could just like, nope, never saw her, never would. <laughs> I don't even know how to read, bro. As I was walking around the accursed pavement, I could make out the sole silhouette of another head of me. A woman wearing a green overcoat, she was. Just went to overtake her. She suddenly let out a scream and collapsed this, on, the on the floor. What could have happened? So I ran as fast as my legs would carry to that cursed lodgings. Hmm. <laughs> A green overcoat? Well, that's exactly what the woman in the print is wearing. Wowzers! My! A photographic print in full color? What in the world will come up next? That's not... Uh, the defendant has done nothing more than admit he fled the scene of a terrifying incident. Not that he caused it! That does not mean he's guilty of a heinous crime of stabbing the woman in the back! Mm -hmm. There was nobody else there at the time. Just the two of them. The victim and the accused. In other words, there was nobody else who could possibly have stabbed the woman. So, a fact that the accused concedes. Mm, no, not really. She, maybe she got stabbed and didn't realize it till later. That's so far-fetched even for me. Hmm. Seems as cross-examination could prove to be pivotal, Consul. Well, get on then. Uh, yes, my lord. Nothing for it. I have to use this cross-examination to turn tables. It's our only chance. I'm suffering screwed already. Oh, God. Don't screw me over, Gregson. Please, please make it easy for me. As I said, it was 5 o'clock in the afternoon with the incident, and there was unusual light fog. Uh, visibility was reasonably good, and there was no one else... Was it reasonably good? I don't recall what? that being a detail. Hold up, I want more info. How are you able to state that with any certainty? Quite simply, my learned friend. Because that is what the witnesses to this crime have told us. Uh, Inspector Gretchen mentioned that yesterday, didn't he? Yeah, the gear ebbs. Right? That's right, one of them is a policeman. I believe from Scotland Yard. No, those aren't the gear ebbs at all. Then we never met these people. It is, uh, correct there, ma'am. Uh, so, then we must hear their testimony! Now! The prosecution will, of course, call them to the stand, should it be necessary, which it isn't. But, wait! Okay, at five o'clock in the afternoon, the middle of winter? It would have been dark already! Yeah, no matter how light the fog would have been, no one could have seen... There's lamps. Come on, bruh, even you know that. I am unaware of the situation on your tiny island in the east. But here in the capital city of Great Britain, all roads are illuminated in the night by gas street lights. What if the gas street lights weren't on yet? You know, the good boys at Scotland Yard might take them a while. The prosecution believes there will be ample light by which to witness the crime. What? 
Here in London, for the first time in history, mankind's completely conquered the darkness. <laughs> Make him see slowly turning into Goofy. Max, see, we got god dang lights. Look at that. We defeated Turnabog. <laughs> okay, back on top of it. I miss Kingdom Hearts. Uh, I wish I could just get through the fog of this cross-examination. I... This is dicey already. It seems the Council for the Defense is taking stock. Continue with your testimony, Inspector. Oh, okay, I guess so. Well, out of the blue, the victim was stabbed from behind and subsequently collapsed on the pavement. Okay, I mean, I, I think this is one where we... I'm, I'm going to see if I can find an inconsistency, but I don't think that's the case. Hughes ran off scattering his belongings all over the floor. Okay, let's talk about those belongings. Mr. Natsumi's belongings. Uh, I think you'll find it's all there in the photographic print of the crime scene. Okay, good. We're pulling this up again. It's three books and the knife. I need to look at the knife. Three books on the floor. That's right, my lord. Second hand books, they are. Irreparably damaged after falling in the snow, of course. Used books. Ah, what a shame. The accused could easily have carried all three books in one hand. Which means. His other hand would have been able to wield a knife, for example. He's got us there! He's very clever, isn't he? Yeah, he sure is painting a beautiful picture. What do you mean, Sasato? He's made it extremely hard for you to assert that Mr. Natsumi had his hands full with his books. He managed to close the one avenue of escape. But I've been able to knew it. E even he knew it was there. Oh, God. You mean to say the defendant was holding his belongings and thrust a knife for the woman's back? Okay. That's, uh, then how do you open the, like, knife? Like, hold on, let's, let's look at the knife real quick. Just, just examine it. I mean, you gotta, like, you can't, really, like, flick that one open, you know? It's got that little indention thing for your nail. That's how you open it. I would dare say, no, he can't open that one-handed, but what do I know? It must, uh, been what happened, my lord, yes, uh, that's how it is. Okay. I'm going to press these last two statements. I'm going to look at the evidence. Those being a number of books, it just body was on the way after home bookshop, it seems. All right, did you talk to the bookshop people? The defendant apparently visited a secondhand bookshop on a daily basis? Yeah, as I understand. Shop full of old uh, English literature. Come in the accused on the lofty subject matter of his scholarly attention. <laughs> Don't flatter yourself, God. The blokes are almost stacked floor to ceiling with all the musty old books. Well, can you tell us about the bookshop in question, please, Inspector? Eh, uh, well, if I must, uh, I have to ask you to look at the street map again. Yes, this is our, this is our chance, dude. If, if it, oh, dump, it's right there. No, it's not our chance. <laughs> Close to second-hand bookshop to the accused lodgings is placed right here, Bourbon Books. A little place on the Briar Road in uh, Mercham Street. I always get that one wrong, but uh, you know it's right there. As it happens, the accused is currently living in lodgings on the other side of Briar Road, the opposite end. This means it doesn't have to take a genius to walk out the road, he thought. Yes, me. Boom, boom, there it goes. Something like that. I don't know. I ain't, I ain't, I ain't an artisan. Why? <laughs> it's, a, it's a lovely description. You did, you, did get great, you did great, Gregson. It's hard to say. Well, I concur with your conclusion, Inspector. The defendant would certainly have passed the scene of the crime on the way home from the particular shop. Why couldn't it be on the other side of town? Mr. Naruto, I think what the inspector just told us could turn out to be vital importance. I agree. But the most important part that the inspector just made was being... Its location? Yeah. I mean... Uh... Dude, I'm sorry. The more you think about this, like, why the... Why stab somebody if you're like, oh, oh man, just another day being a foreigner. I love it. What's that? A back without a knife in it? Well, better get a stabbing. Uh, now that my job's done, let's run home and read some English literature. Just don't add up. It's crazy, people. I know he looks crazy, but. Most important point. Let me hold up. Ah, oh, dumb. We don't have that book that we saw at the Garadevs. Frick. Okay, I'm just gonna say the name, cause you know, or no location, cause we're looking at the map. The crucial details: what you've just told the court, Inspector, is the location of the bookshop. 
Yeah, I couldn't agree more. That's why I brought the map and drew on you, dingus. Uh, so where is it exactly? Uh, beg your pardon? I, are you are you winding me up, sunshine? I just explained that. I got the map in there. For, I use a red ink. I took out my red pen. Use a red. I use red bloom. <laughs> It actually says that. And Joe the blokes rode home. What? F I, yeah. I not distinctly remember seeing you nod along, Council. Was that not not sincere? My God. Oh yes, uh, of course. Must have been so nervous I didn't take it in. Sorry. I hope that didn't hurt my record. The blunder of the day goes to you, my learned friend. I'm. I'll take the reward with pride. All right. Not yet. The trial's only just begun. There's other blunders to be had. Mr. Norodo. I would strongly advise you to look carefully through the court record at this stage. Oh god, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. At once, miss. Sorry, I made a mistake. Okay. Inspector, continue with your testimony, please. Well, there we have it. But what's weird about this map? Hold up. Mm. Okay. Bourbon books. I, I don't know yet. Okay. Let's look at that other evidence, too, while we're at it. No, we'll, fin we'll finish the cross-exam first. Just made a matter of working out of the books belonged to him and found the bloke arrested him. Okay. But, wait, if they're used books, how did you go about that? No, that's so bad. You asked for the help of famous detective Herlock Sholmes to locate the defendant, I believe. Eh, uh, stuff and nonsense. What? I'm, I'm sorry? Uh, Jack in office. That buzzy body just comes and sticks his oar on whatever you ask him or not. So you didn't actually go to him? He's just like, oh, don't worry, Scotland Yard, I'll help. But according to what I have here, Mr. Sholmes was shown to the scene of the crime by Scotland Yard. Hell, well, that was nothing to do with me, okay? The lads on the scene must have done it without my permission. I don't need no help from that nincompoop. Uh, okay, touchy matter. And tell him time and time again. Whenever something happens, send word to headquarters. Then follow your blooming instructions. I... Sorry, I hope they continue to follow in procedures. And that meddler gets his hands on any details, I'll be reading it in Rats Magazine next month. And you can bet your last fart and fart. Wait, is it last fartithin? Fartithin? That'll be in there too. Stripped of all my hard work on the case. Yes, Mr. Sholmes. No, Mr. Sholmes. Aren't you clever, Mr. Sholmes? That's all. Thanks. I'll be getting. Inspector, this tangent is unnecessary. If the man is proving detrimental to the Yard's activities, perhaps I should step in and deal with him. Ah, uh, 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 no, 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 hey, oh, yeah, yeah, whoa, whoa, buddy, you know what It appears Inspector Gregson is lost for words. Well, I mean, uh... Yes, the Reaper's words carry a lot of weight. They even get a special color for text, it's not that... Anywho, the point is, old Japanese blokes already admitted it. He admits that he the books all over the pavement the scene by the ones he bought that day. So there. Frick. Hmm. What's wrong? What do you think, Mr. Naruto? If you're really unable to sway the jury with this cross-examination, I know, I know, I know. That Mr. Natsumi fate will be sealed. Yeah, should we found guilty. So one way or another, I have to expose an undeniable inconsistency in the inspector's testimony. Got it. I can do that. I'm fairly certain it's this one, that being the number of old books just bought. He's on his way home from the bookshop. But what is the inconsistency here? Okay, I need to like clearly look at all of our evidence, first and foremost. Secondhand book receipt. Well, well there you have it, your books. That's not the name. God, that was easy. Also, I wanna look at the knife. All right, so we found the problem. The book receipt, which, let's check the date. Yeah, that checks out. And what books he checked out are those. I mean, that's pretty darning information. I'm gonna peep this out though. I'm just curious. Uh, looks a little dull, doesn't it? Huh, can't find anything out of place. Uh, Maybe the tip? Wait, what the? The tip's missing. Look here, Mr. Naruto. Just at the tip, a small piece of the blade appears to be missing. You're right. Well spotted, Mr. Sato. I wonder what could have happened to it. Yes, you don't think. Could it still be lodged in the victim? Oh god, that's a scary thought. Oh dear, I hope not. That sounds terribly painful. 
That is rather strange. It would have to be one heck of an impact to do that. Like, even if you hit bone. That is really peculiar. Oh, God, I'm going to be thinking about this the whole trial. And no markings on it at all. Don't. Okay. It's not a big deal. This is almost like too... Ugh. This feels like a giant setup, man. I'm sorry. Okay. But let's not get into crazy theory time. Let's, uh, pre- no, crap. Go back, press, and talk about the, uh, the name inconsistency. The problem is, according to his information, which is more or less just a guess, he went to Bourbon Books, but we have evidence that says that ain't effin' true! So there! Inspector Gregson, may I ask you a favor? Eh, what the heck you want? Better not be what, you know, I put, <laughs> put his chips in <laughs> down. Would you kindly add the name of the bookshop to your formal testimony, please? Ooh, setting them up! I believe it may be of vital importance. Maybe. Eh, all right. Uh, well, you know, I mean, y yes, I, uh, I would be very important clue. Uh, fine, very well. Not that I can see it being any great significance, but... Uh, please revise your testimony. Uh, yes, sir, my lord, whatever you say. Could the man be any more... Sardonic? I don't know. Depends what sardonic means. I'm just thinking of Thardines. <laughs> so on his way home from Bourbon Books, second-hand shop he apparently patronizes. No, no, no. I don't think that's true. So the shop is called Bourbon Books. Is that correct? I'm sorry. I have to just set him up to ooh, tear him down. Yeah, that's right. That's the closest second-hand bookshop to the accursed lodgings, according to... Didn't look too bad to me, but... To get there from the back of his house, you gotta go whoop, 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 there it is. <laughs> Un unintentionally quoted Space Jam. <laughs> it had gone right past the very spot the incident took place. Okay, if I could, can we be sure the defendant really did visit Bourbon Books on the day in question? Uh, well, we actually haven't confirmed this, so... Uh, you haven't confirmed it? Why the devil not? That seems really simple. Well, the thing is, uh, you know, the shopkeeper's gone on a trip, see? Let the morning after the incident collect, uh, more stock, I thought I'm told. <laughs> so we uh, haven't been able to ask the bulk of the accused visited his shop on the day in question or not. You couldn't find him? I... Well, in that case, what the defendant himself have to say about it? No recollection. Uh, huh? He didn't remember? According to the statement he made at the time... The accused has no recollection of where he's been. That's... That's really weird. Of course he doesn't. I... Blow clearly has his head in the clouds when he was walking around town. I mean, it's not that hard to navigate. You just go west of Bourbon, go up to north. 37th's right over there. And there you go. Boom. There it is. Boom. There it is. It's just that easy. <laughs> he claims he's just been wandering into whatever bookshop happened to be passing. And rarely notices the name. Hard to believe. <laughs> I mean, he's from a different country. I should say the man ought to look at where he's going. Lest he be accused of murder again. I, uh... So, it's just as I thought. They don't have hard evidence. Inspector, you may continue. Oh, that won't be necessary. <laughs> I'm so sure. You're going down, punk! Got you, Gregson! Boom, there it is! If I could just stop you right there, Mr. Gregson. Hey, what, what is this, sunshine? I'm a busy man. Let me keep my sentence going. Come on. I got good flow. This is a receipt that we found in Mr. Natsumi's room. It is issued on the day of the incident. It details the purchase of three secondhand books. That was a big deal. Yes. Oh, crap. And you found that in the accused room, did you? Wow. You stealing stuff now, huh? Y yes, but the point is not where the receipt was found but the name of the shop printed on it. Go on. You see, this receipt was issued from a bookshop called Your Books. Your Books? Y-O-R-E, I presume. I'm just guessing. I haven't looked at the receipt yet. Yes, my lord. So Mr. Natsumi did indeed purchase a number of books at a second-hand shop that day. However, the bookshop in question was not Bourbon Books. Eh. Oh, come on! Come on, man! How was I supposed to know that? Do, 
Do, do you know the other bookshop, Inspector? Oh, yes, sir. Go there all the time. Uh, yeah, your, your, your books is another secondhand book not far from Barber Books. It's all, uh, you could dare say it's like right inside it. Uh, it's just that, um, <clears throat> well, it's not such a small place. Uh, I didn't think the accused ever knew about it. That's, you're not doing your job good enough, Gregson. But it's the fact that is the bookshop where the defendant visited on the day in question. You need to do your research, boy. And the receipt proves it. How can you, how can you, what? Yes, for what difference it makes. Whether the man purchases musty tomes. It makes no difference in the final analysis. Objection. It could if he went a different path. I disagree. I mean, after all, uh, just tell me it's not right next to it. Like, please don't troll me. I have the street map here. If that might be helpful. Uh, yes, thank you. Okay, have a look at this. Where's your books? Where is it? If the defendant had been returning from Bourbon Books, then yeah, it looks pretty bad. He must all certainly must have passed the place where Mr. Green, Miss Green was attacked. However, if we take into account the fact that he was actually at another bookshop, your books, and they very well turn out he wouldn't have passed the location at all. Hey, what? Uh, could that be true? Mm, my, my. It rather depends on whether this bookshop is. But I do declare it may be possibility. Is that right, Mr. Lawyer, sir? <laughs> what you just said? Yes, absolutely. It absolutely could be right, kind of. Well, there we go. There we go. There we have it. Ladies and gentlemen, I didn't mess up. Inspector Gregson, wh where is this your book's establishment? You patrol the city, you would know. Well, uh, uh, obviously we looked into that too. I mean, yeah. <laughs> You know, in our limited time to investigate, might I add, but, uh... <coughs> turns out that your books... It's right there. Dump, no! It's just here on the next corner of, uh, Mr. Charm Street, going east. Uh, that doesn't help. That's still the same path! No! And there you have it. As you can clearly see now. Um, no, you can't. Dang it. But he could have went the other way. Who knows? Oh, he definitely went down that path. He admits it. My learned Nipponese friend is obviously in training to be a clown. The way he regales us with such wittiness and... Uh, to your future career in the circus. I'll join the lions of the Garadebs. You put that glass down, or I'll put it down for you. Dang! Get him, Susato! Tear him up! I, uh, didn't think I needed to spell it out, but, uh, okay, here we go. Let's, uh, do it again, I guess. Time for the red pen. I'm gonna run out of ink. I don't, ugh. The accused was coming on from your books instead of bourbon books. Yeah, it's going the same way. Pretty basic stuff, all right? There's no doubt he'd still pass the place where the victim was stabbed. Capiche? We all on the same page? Yes, thank you, Inspector. <sighs> there we go. Allow me to reiterate for my learned, if somewhat slow, Nipponese friend. You can't say that. That's not up. How does your glove never get pink? Wherever the man purchased his musty tomes, it makes no difference in the final analysis. <laughs> <laughs> it's not that serious, Sasato. Uh, you, yep. As I suspected, you can't fool me. And I don't suggest you try. What did I say? Well, I don't know for this now. Beg your pardon, not terribly sorry, but would you mind repeating? Yeah, shut the frig up. But you can't, oh, I see him lips flapping, but I don't hear it. Mr. Naruto, please get off the ground. Uh, we mustn't give up. W what do you mean? Prosecution, <laughs> do your job. Oh my God! Like, <laughs> if the prosecution assert sanction is correct, the members of the jury may very well decide that Mr. Natsumi is guilty. Yeah, basically. We must think. We must consider the assertion just put forward by the prosecution very, very carefully. Okay. They claim so. Seki-san must have passed location by the incident on his way home from your books, but who's to say he didn't go the other way? Like, okay, let's. Let's let's really look at this. That is still a considerable distance from that other path. 
Who's to say he didn't take Calabash Road? Like, why not, bruh? I mean, yeah, he'd still kind of go near Briar Road, but still. I... <sighs> Magnifying glass. Yep, it's it's an X. God, that's a lovely pen. Yeah, thank you very much. My mana gave it to me for birthday. Anyway, uh, I... Uh, we have no choice. We have to raise an objection of some kind. Right? The assertion just made by the prosecution is fundamentally flawed! Hey, I don't want to go that far. I'll just say a little loose, but, uh... Explain, your counsel. I... Uh, yes, my lord! You can see what I mean on this map. When returning from your books to his lodgings... Uh... Mr. Natsumi could have followed the route suggested by the prosecution. However, that isn't the only conceivable route to take between two places. Exactly. Dude, yes! We're on the same page, Ace Attorney! Hooray! If the defendant uses these streets, look what happens! He arrives back at his lodgings without passing the location where the victim was attacked! Objection! Uh, don't call it a fantasy. Talking back to a clown is a fool's errand, of course. However, I feel compelled to point out that... That route is what is commonly referred to as a long way around. Uh, so he'd never take it? Not in a million years? On a cold winter's night, why would any man choose to take a long route to- Oh god, he's got me. Well, maybe he's a fan of snow? We have that in Japan, but Elsa- The answer is extremely simple. He wouldn't! In other words... Yeah, the accused took the obvious route back to his lodgings. That is the obvious perpetrator of this crime! We don't know that, but, but, uh, I've, got, I've got it. Obviously, he must have asked the man himself. Ask Mr. Natsumi which route he took home. <laughs> I've already informed the court of the accused's response to such questioning. Oh, that's such bull crap. He claims he has no recollection. Well, I guess that doesn't hurt us. <laughs> Great. Yeah, that's right. As I said, the bloke seems to spend his time outside wandering around aimlessly from A to B. Sometimes C, but let's not get ahead of ourselves. Hey. That day is no exception. Says he don't remember where he was or which route he took. You, you're kidding. Not sue me. Come on. I don't... I don't believe this! These are so hard! I thank you my learned friend, and suggest that we do not waste any more of this court's time by wandering aimlessly around this subject. It's a cold winter day, after all. <laughs> Pray, what say you, insightful jurors? Uh, but even if that's the case, oh god, we got shut down instantly. They're ticked! What the heck I do? I agree with Lord Van Zakes there. Wholeheartedly in every way. Oh, God, he's bitter after the last trial. I don't believe... Does this mean it's over already? We members of the jury are completely convinced now. Well, in that case, I hereby call upon all members of the jury. Uh, I can present your findings. Can I... Guilty. Can I do the... Guilty. You're joking. Guilty. 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 Stop it. Stop it. Guilty. You're... No. That's absurd. Already? I don't think we can use the... You know, the thing again, right? Judge. Oh my god, we're so screwed. Ah, uh, what appear the judge's learning is, uh, unanimous. That's not too bad, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> to the insightful members of the jury, I applaud your brave resolve. You serve queen and country admirably. Oh, fiddlesticks. Mr. Narodo, please get up. Would the real Mr. Narodo please stand up? Please stand up. No, I'm, I'm okay. No, this isn't over yet. That's right. I still have one last chance to sway the opinion of the jury. Do we? I have to tip the balance of those scales the other way. 
I have to turn this around. Yeah, do it, do it, do it, do it, do it. Somehow, yeah, I don't know how. Hmm, those are the eyes of Quarry, not yet willing to give up and die. Uh, not yet. So I presume you intend to wield your rights again in this trial. Rights of the defense written in antiquated British law that should be buried long ago. I'm, I, I, I could try that. I mean, yeah, it's a good trick. Call it antiquated if you will. But it's the defense's prerogative to carry out the summation examination if he so chooses. Well, counsel, in accordance with the letter of law, shall proceed. <laughs> I'm really doing this again. Are the members of the jury ready, Foreman? Of course we ready. Uh, I'm all too familiar with that Nipponese whippersnapper and his onkus refusal to throw in his alley. <laughs> He's so tick. Very well, then. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, you will each explain on what grounds you have determined the defendant to be guilty. Okay. Well, let's hear it. What y'all got? Judicial findings. I'm... Oh, God, I don't know how I'm going to voice all these people. I'll try. For pity's sake, that little Nipponese oddity already admitted it himself, didn't he? If he said that a woman in green collapsed before his eyes, why? It can only have been the victim. The man wouldn't have gone around the house on his way back from the bookshop. Not in winter. Come on now. So the poor woman was attacked from behind, was she? How dreadful. I really don't care. Just can we just wrap this up now? Got work to be doing. Uh, your books, yes. A nice shop, that. But bourbon books, oh, not worth a visit, if I reckon. <laughs> That's not the... What? Come on. <laughs> and there you have it. With only minor exceptions, the reason for finding the defendant guilty are too clear. Uh, when the stabbing occurred, the only two people at the scene were the victim and the accused. And the accused himself. I was admitted to seeing the victim in her green overcoat sink to the ground before his eyes. Furthermore, we've heard from the inspector that the defendant then fled the scene. I must say, I have ample grounds to convict him already. Please don't. Please, 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 please. Maybe... Oh, this is going to sound effed up and everyone's getting mad at me in the comments. Maybe they didn't see... Maybe the assailant was really short and not soon we didn't see her. Like, or see who it was behind her. It's possible, you know? Oh dear. Even the judge appears convinced of Mr. Natsumi's guilt. Why do we have to run away like that? Oh my god, Natsumi! And how are we supposed to believe in some phantom attacker that nobody could see? This is impossible. How can I possibly make a case for the defense? Mr. Norohodo, oh my god. We had a chapter about how you have to do it no matter what. There was no time for grumbling. <laughs> it's so true. If you want to force the trial to continue. I know. It's time to forge. No. It's time to lie. No. I have to turn the tide. I must make the jurors change their minds. Mm-hmm. Okay. Well, for them at least. Exactly. We have no choice but to forge forward. So we do forge. No. Narahodo, you're starting to make me angry. Okay. Sorry. You have the floor, counsel. Begin your summation examination, I reckon. Yes, my lord. I have some ideas, but I just need to keep the trial going somehow. Whatever it takes. Come on, Ryanosuke. You can do this! I sure hope I can. Oh, you see Gregson back there. Hey, what's it to you? Keep your eyes on a prize, mister. Defendant's rebuttal. It's go time. <laughs> 